G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, the market has taken a turn. <laughs> Nothing big though and I know a lot of people are probably getting scared and really, really worried but honestly, uh, it's just more of the same. Okay, the market cap has dropped down so we're back under 1.4 trillion but really Bitcoin is still just ranging. It's stuck between kind of really about 32,000 to around about sort of 35,000. It's in a $2,000 range that it's really kind of you know, 3,000 I suppose, but it doesn't really quite get to 35,000. It's sort of 32,000, you know, maybe a little bit lower, 31 something to about sort of 34 something. But, you know, we'll just kind of round it off and say 32 to 34,000. That's where it's been stuck. So for me, I'm not too worried, but, you know, something big is going to happen. You can just feel it. It's coming. And hopefully it's going to be to the upside and, you know, my... My gut feeling says it's to the upside, but you know, that's not financial advice. You need to make your own decisions. But this isn't kind of really surprising to see that, you know, it looked like it was gonna break above 35, 36,000, and then it just turned around and went straight back down to, I saw it at 31,000. It was like down there for a very brief second. And when I bought it, when I bought some Bitcoin, it was at 32,000. So I wasn't even fast enough to get it at 31,000. But again, just ranging. So yeah, $1.3 trillion uh, total market cap. So that hurts a little bit, down 3.8%. BTC dominance uh, rising a little bit. And again, that's because they're just shaking everyone out at the moment. They're letting it rise. People are getting into altcoins and then they're dumping Bitcoin and the altcoins dump even more. And then people panic sell and it is, you know, some good old fashioned sort of market manipulation at the moment. And I'm, I'm not sure whether it's, uh, really big whales that are doing it because really when whales do it there's fairly substantial moves the moves are a lot more now I think it's you know more I don't know what they call them dolphins and octopuses and things like that I think you know probably uh, playing a little bit of the market again this is all just me taking a guess it's not financial advice but we just really don't seem to go under sort of 31,000 we might wick down into 31,000. Really, we sit at around 32, and we don't go over 34 and a half thousand dollars. You know, we'll wick above, but it really just kind of stays there. So it's pretty hard. But look, uh, Ethereum gas prices are, you know, still fairly cheap, but 27. Again, that's people starting to panic and jumping in and out of stable coins and all the rest of it. And yeah, the market is an interesting place at the moment. But for me, and again, I'm, I'm never going to offer you financial advice. I'm just buying. I don't really care what happens to the market in the short term. I know that I'm already buying at massive discounts. We looked at it yesterday when we looked at the all-time highs. Everything is about 50, if not 60 to 70, 80% on discount from its old all-time highs not that long ago. So I'm buying. Like I'm really focusing more on Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum than anything else. Did buy some altcoins the other day though, but I also bought some Bitcoin. And again, I, I just don't care what happens to the price at the moment. If it continues to go down, I just think this is a, I'm going to get better and better entry points. And every single time it goes down and I buy some more, that amount that I bought there is going to go up by more by the time it reaches the next new all-time high. And that's just the way I look at it. I, I'm an investor, not so much a trader, and I'm never going to time the bottom. I know that. And you know, you can say, well, you can set your buy orders, but what happens if I set my buy order at 31,258 thinking that that'll be the bottom and it goes to 29,750? Then again, I've missed the bottom. I don't care about trying to find the bottom. I don't care about trying to find the exact top. I just need to be in between and I'm going to make plenty of money. So for me, everything is on discount and that's all I really see. Could it go lower? Yep. Could it go much lower? Absolutely it could. Do I think it's going to go much lower? No, but I am prepared for if it does. I've still made you know, more money in the last year and a bit than I could have ever imagined that I would have been able to make. You know, I only wish I could have had to put in more, you know, that I had more money to kind of put in. I haven't made life-changing money. I can't retire. I'm, you know, not a millionaire or anything silly like that. It'd be nice if I was, but I've made more money in the last sort of, a little bit more now. We're probably going around about sort of, 15-ish months, then yeah, I would have anywhere else. I couldn't have put that kind of money uh, into the stock market and made the same kind of returns unless I just got super lucky. Whereas with crypto, it was a whole lot easier. 
But anyway, that's me. All right, what's been the best gainer? Let's have a look. We'll change this to just the top 50 coins. Um, yeah, we'll just go top 50. All right, what's done the best? Actually, let's go top 100. That's what we normally sort of have a look at. So, all right, what's done the best in the last 24 hours? Top 100. Whew, Ravain, bit of a move there. So again, not everything's down. There's a couple of coins that are doing all right. OKB, very, very small gains though. Nothing sort of too major. And again, you can see the stable coins are rising here because a lot of people are jumping back into the stable coins. They're just flip-flopping in between at the moment. That's, you know, your speculative kind of traders and things like that, whereas investors... For me, yeah, I just buy and really hold. I, I hardly ever sell anything. That's not to say that I don't ever sell. I do, but really, I'm looking more three, four, five, ten, twenty years down the track as opposed to where's this going to be next week. When I really believe that we are in a true bear market and things just continue and to go down, then I will literally start to, you know, hold some more of my sort of fortnightly money that I put into cryptocurrencies in, excuse me, USDC. But at the moment, I think we pretty much are at the bottom. Now, don't get me wrong. If I see Bitcoin go down below 30,000, like a daily close below 30,000, then different story. My, my investment thesis changes. I start to put in a little bit less into the actual cryptos and I start to buy stable coins, waiting for the bottom. But again, I miss this dip from, you know, in my ability to sell more coins. So really, the sell-off from, you know, sort of 64 down to sort of 30,000, it all happened very, happened very quickly. Uh, and by the time I started buying, I was already kind of buying the bottom anyway. And again, I've been focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum mainly. And they're generally holding pretty good. I bought, you know, Ethereum at 2,100. It dropped down a little bit lower. And we're going to have a look. Ethereum could be going lower again. And if it does, I'm just going to buy more. Now, I bought a lot of Ethereum, you know, way back at like $250, $300. Well, what I would consider a lot, not what other people would probably consider a lot. But that was my sort of uh, entry point of uh, Ethereum. And, you know, my sort of average entry point for Bitcoin uh, when I put my money in was around about 8000 ish I got some cheaper and I definitely got some a little bit more expensive. And I'm buying uh, Bitcoin now, as I said, at sort of, you know, that kind of 30 to ish thousand dollar level and I'm more than happy to buy it and I'll just keep buying it if it goes down to 30,000 and I'll just keep buying it if it goes down to 27,000, 28,000 but if Bitcoin does start to dip below that $30,000 mark and we actually get candle closes there then my investment thesis will change and like I said I'll be putting more money into stable coins and less into actual crypto waiting to see a bottom but at the moment it's just trading sideways and I get the feeling like that kind of is the bottom could be completely wrong but all right look we've had a look at the gain so there's you know really there's one semi-decent gain there don't get me wrong nearly 10 percent's right and then we're just into a couple of single digit gains any gains better than a loss but now let's have a look at the losses. What hasn't done so well in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Whoo, synthetics. This was all the way down at sort of $5 for a while there, and I, I wish I had have bought some at five. Uh, I just didn't. Uh, you would have basically doubled your money already, and this was up at $13, and now we can see it's already coming back to 11 So we'll have to wait and see. Still massive fan of synthetics network. They have their layer two exchanges coming out very soon, I think. You know, that's one of my big buys out of, you know, all the DeFi projects. Aave would be my number one. Synthetics would be my number two. Uh, Chainlink would probably be my number two. Or Synthetics, hard to pick between those two. Uh, and then Uni. Uh, they are my kind of DeFi picks. Uh, I have other DeFi, but they're the ones that I just think are going to have, you know, long-term value. Uh, I'm also invested in the graph, though. really like that. I was looking at getting some Theta. I really was, and then I... Yeah, I just didn't, and I'll keep my eye out for, you know, does it go lower? But I've got some others. I want to get some more Terra Luna. I really like Terra Luna. Uh, Alpha Finance, uh, I might look at getting some more of that. Again, DeFi, I really think that's where the biggest gains are going to come from. It's just trying to pick, you know, the ones that will sort of have that lasting effect that will be here in four or five years' time. 
Uh, and yeah, that is going to be the challenge because there's no guarantee that any of the ones, again, Uniswap, you know, Chainlink probably would be the safest, but it's been around the longest. But whether Chainlink, Aves, or Synthetix, or Uniswap can do that, uh, not really sure. But I mean, look at these gains. You know, we've got a couple of double digits and then a lot of high sort of single digits uh, and then to mid single digits. So again, the market in total is only down sort of 3%. It's not all bad, but it is concerning. All right, let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So as we can see here, we did get that sell off yesterday and it, it wasn't as bad as what people sort of make it out because look, we are still sort of on an upward sort of trend. The lows are getting higher in the very short term. And have a look what happened on the RSI. We can see we had this you know, downward trend. We need to break above it to become uh, bullish. Staying below it is bearish. Uh, and again, this red line here, as long as we stay above it, we are bullish. And look at this. It's almost pinpoint perfect, just working. And this purple line right now, I mean, let's see if we can go in here and have a look. Have a look at that right in there. It's bounced up just above it. And again, these lines aren't exactly perfect. They're just thereabouts. But look at this. It is coiling up so tight. I just get the feeling like we're going to get the move very, very soon. Same thing on the MACD. I mean, have a look at this. It looked like it was going to cross over and then it turned upwards. Now it's turned back downwards and it's all just getting so close. I get the feeling like the move... If it doesn't come this week, and I think it will come this week, it'll most likely come the following week. I can't see Bitcoin trading in such a tight range without a big move happening. Now, I'm hoping that it's going to be the ups to the upside, but I am not, you know, completely, you know, 100% uh, you know, locked into that idea that, you know, I would then throw everything I have, you know. If it goes lower, I buy more. If it goes higher awesome congratulations what i'll be looking out for is that we eventually have to break this kind of trend line here because we could easily come up and reject from this trend line and then that is going to be the time to maybe take some profits on things around about here because if it rejects then it'll probably reject hard but what would be bullish is if it comes up here we still take some profits around about here it breaks out and it could go quite a lot higher and then it'll come back down and retest. And if it comes back down and retest, then that's where you can buy back in. So that's, you know, if you're more a trader and all the rest of it, uh, they would be things that I'd be looking out for. But again, this Bollinger Band is so tight at the moment. The Bollinger Band almost never gets that tight. And when it does, a big move usually ensues. And again, fingers crossed it's to the upside. All right, ETH. ETH is not looking overly pretty at the moment, but what we can see is we were hoping we'd stay above here. It's actually acted as resistance, so the kind of $2,100 range, and then we broke down and we're staying above the 1950 at the moment. But if we lose this, then I do get the feeling like we're probably going to come down and sort of test this $1,700-ish dollar level. But again, it doesn't mean I'm like overly bearish on Ethereum, I think Ethereum is going to do something very similar to Bitcoin. I think it's just going to get less and less volatile. It's going to be stuck in a range, which it kind of is anyway. Uh, and then Bitcoin will make a big move and then everything else will start to follow. All right, just a couple of news stories to follow up with. So the estimated daily transaction value in USD on the Bitcoin blockchain has nosedived from the recent peak to the lowest position in six months. So that's what I'm talking about. There's just not a lot going on at the moment. Everyone's sort of waiting to see what happens. And when it's like that, there's usually a big move. And again, it's super quiet at the moment. Could it drop lower? Yep. I just get the feeling it's going to be the upside. But again, never financial advice. You've got to make your own decision. But when it gets super quiet like this, usually a big move comes. And again, if it's already super quiet, why would it suddenly dump off even further? It could. It absolutely could, but you'd have to ask yourself, why wouldn't it have already just kept going down over the last, I mean, how long has this been going on for? We got here on the 19th, 20th of May. That's months. Months we've been sort of traveling sideways. Really, if this was going to dump even further, it most likely would have done it by now. This is usually an indication of, all right, the bottom's in. It's not to say you couldn't have maybe one more big sell-off and, again, get down to something like 27-ish thousand before you then get that V-shaped recovery and come up. 
but there's no guarantees in life. It could be just we get the big sell off and then go a whole lot lower. But I again, I don't think that's what's going to happen. And I'm I'm an investor, not a trader. So all I see at the moment is everything is on sale. Uh, it's the it's the easiest game to play uh, the investment uh, option as opposed to trying to trade. So yeah, I sell when things are really good. Uh, and I buy when things are sort of what most people would consider really bad, but that's actually the best time to buy. When everyone else is panicking and they're out and, nah, this is going nowhere and it's only going lower, cool. I'm not going to try and pick the exact bottom. I'm just going to buy things when they're on big discounts. Right, Polygon, I mean, it just continues to grow. Even though the market's down and the price has come down a bit, Polygon seems to be holding fairly nice around that kind of dollar level, not to say it can't go lower. But Polygon has collaborated with Community Gaming to allow developers to take advantage of enhanced scaling uh, ability while organizing tournaments. And look, it's not the only one. You then go over here as well. Crypto enthusiasts ape in as DEX expands to Polygon. So ApeSwap plans to expand to Polygon were driven by an awareness of the multi-chain trend that has emerged in the blockchain sector sorry, and a desire to remain at the cutting edge when it comes to DeFi. The project's team has also recruited 10 of its close partners on Binance Smart Chain to join them, helping to create an entire DeFi ecosystem on Polygon overnight. So again, Binance Smart Chain getting uh, involved because Binance Smart Chain is almost a replica of Ethereum. Uh, I'm pretty sure they almost cut and pasted the code. It wasn't too far off. N not exactly, but... Uh, from my understanding, fairly close. So now, again, Polygon, you know, being one of the biggest applications on the Ethereum network, more and more, you know, dApps and apps and all the rest of it are joining in. And again, Polygon's not done yet. They've got optimistic roll-ups that they're working on and ZK roll-ups and things like that, I'm pretty sure as well. So, uh, yeah, again, love Polygon and it should show you that that's probably a pretty good buy. Again, not financial advice, but so many different dApps and apps and platforms and programs, whatever you want to call them, have joined up with Polygon that really there's only one kind of direction the price can really go once the market picks up, and that's a whole lot higher because there's so much you know happening on that chain again that's not financial advice that's just my personal opinion i was lucky enough i got into polygon at you know like less than two cents most of it was more around the kind of two to three cent range but i got a little bit under two cents and now it's worth a dollar so i mean yeah i've done extremely well with polygon and you know the same as every other thing i only wish i had a coulda put in uh, had a coulda i only wish i could have put in uh, a lot more money and yeah I probably would have made life-changing wealth if I would have put in, you know, a lot more of the money I had at the time. But, you know, it was a speculative play. So, again, it was only literally about, I think, 1% of my entire portfolio that I put into Polygon. I think it might have even been a little bit less. But now Polygon takes up, uh, I think it's about 7% of my entire portfolio. So... Yeah, there you go. All right, again, not a lot happening. We're just waiting to see what's going to happen with the price. Ethereum does look like it could go a little bit lower. And if Bitcoin gets on a run, all the other altcoins will go a little bit lower at first as everyone quickly takes out. Take us out. God, I'm struggling today. I'm back to not being able to use the English language very well. Everyone will likely take out some money from anything that they're in and put it into Bitcoin. So they're going to chase those kind of things. And again, for me, I don't like to chase. I like to preempt. So again, when things are starting to pump, then I'll go find things that aren't pumping to put my money into because I don't want to be chasing a pump. Once something's pumping, you, you know, you've then got to be really, really careful about how much gains you can make because it's already pumped. So it's probably closer to, you know, going the other way. But that's not always true. Sometimes you can get in at the very start of a pump and the pump may last, you know, weeks, days, months, you know, possibly, you know, even a year, all, all depending. But a year would be a really long pump, even in the crypto sort of space. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. But if you did, congratulations to you. You've outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.